Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be Automotive Weekly Waveform 15. Same vehicle as last week, different test. We are still using the pulse sensor and the pressure transducer. I'm going to stick with the WPS 500 since I still have it out from the previous test. And I'm still going to use the Nicholson pulse sensor. This test is going to be a cooling system pulse test with the sink and possibly relative compression. We are suspecting a bad head gasket on this vehicle and we want to confirm that we have some pulses going on in the radiator. Um, this vehicle has a misfire on startup. You can kind of smell burnt coolant coming out of the exhaust. It had head gaskets done about a year ago, but that doesn't mean that they haven't failed. Did the customer overheat it? Um, was there a machining imperfection? Do we have a crack in the head? Something like that. We don't know. So if we can identify what cylinder is the problem cylinder, then we can, uh, then we can narrow it down and take a really close inspection when we get it apart. So what we're gonna wanna do is hook, if we're looking at our pulse sensor, um, these don't, aren't meant to uh, have liquids put inside of them. We have to watch that we're not getting coolant inside of the sensor because it's gonna affect our readings, it could damage the sensor. Um, I like using this clear hose. This is off of my snap-on vacuum gauge. Um, I know it's a little long for what most of you guys use for your testing, but it gives me kind of a buffer. If I see coolant going into this hose, then I can shut the vehicle off real quick or I can unhook the pressure transducer. Actually, what I normally undo is hook the hose from the radiator because any pressure that has built up in the hose will expel that coolant back out of the hose. Um, so it's something you wanna watch out for. Don't get junk into your sensor. Also, don't let this sit on the engine as you're running it because you're gonna get weird waveforms. So I have a radiator cap. This is the one I took off the vehicle. Um, I have another one that has the little center button broken off of it. So it works perfect for letting me just hook up to the radiator overflow neck and I'll still get all my pulses. Some guys use their pressure gauge setup. They'll put their adapter cap on there and hook up that way. Some guys will use a little chamber in their line, just a little air chamber so they don't get coolant into their gauge as well. If you can drop the coolant level a little bit, that helps. Um, but the more you drop it, the less movement we're gonna see in our pulses, I believe, because um, we're gonna have more air volume. Liquids don't compress, air does. So it'll, it'll dampen it a little bit if we have a bunch of air in there. Now we are gonna do this test a couple of different ways. We are still gonna need a synchronization channel. So we are gonna try it as a running test to begin with. I'm gonna hook up to the cylinder number one ignition coil. The, the problem with this vehicle is it's a waste fire system. So when it fires that coil, we don't know if it's firing cylinder number one or cylinder number four, I believe, um, since they share the same coil. So we could narrow it down to two cylinders potentially, um, but we may have to do something else to get a better synchronization channel if we want to pinpoint that test. But let's go ahead and hook this up. I'm already hooked up on the radiator. Hook my two wires on here. Uh, we're gonna start with 200 millivolts. I'm gonna hook my sink channel up to the coil. Let's fire it up, see what we get. Monitor our hose, make sure we're not getting coolant in it and hopefully we get a good waveform. Okay, our pulses don't seem quite consistent enough for me to identify a specific cylinder. Um, they kind of come at random. So our next step is going to be trying a cranking test instead of a running test. Now, I don't have clear flood mode on this vehicle. I'm gonna disable ignition, we're gonna lose our sync. If we see a better pattern in the cranking format, we're gonna have to find another way to get a sync channel. Okay, ignition is disabled. Let's see if we get a better signal this time. There we go, now we see something here. Um, we are seeing distinctive pulses, very large pulses in the cooling system. Let me zoom in on one of these cycles here. 
So we see a very, very steep pulse. And then we see a, an area where it drops back down because even if that pressure stays in the cooling system, um, the, the piezo transducer inside of here is no longer moving. So it's no longer generating power. So it kind of peaks out, levels out again, peaks out, levels out again. Um, we will probably see a different reading if we use the WPS 500. But how are we gonna sync this up? We need a method of synchronizing this to what cylinder's causing it. Um, the easiest way would be put an adapter in one of the spark plug holes if you have a pressure transducer and sync it off the pressure transducer. I understand a lot of you guys don't have pressure transducers and pulse sensors and, or you may only have one or the other, you don't have two. The next thing we can do is we can remove a spark plug and do a relative compression check. So I'm not gonna remove number one because that requires me taking the air intake off. Um, I am going to just pull out number two. We know what our firing order is, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it should be fairly easy to synchronize based off of that. And since I have a spark plug out, I don't see any antifreeze or dampness on this plug. So it's probably not in cylinder number two. I need to move my sink channel, which I need to get another clamp. So now instead of going to the ignition coil, I'm gonna go to the battery. This is going all the way back to some of the first weeks when we started um, testing batteries and then we did a relative compression check. And we don't need an amp clamp for this. An amp clamp gives you a little bit clearer picture, I think, but we don't need it. I'm just gonna hook up two positive and negative on the battery with my, with my leads there. To simulate a waveform from an amp clamp, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to, we gotta hit record here. I'm go to channel one. I'm gonna go to five volts. I'm gonna couple it AC. That's gonna take away our DC aspect of it and I'm gonna invert that waveform. The only thing we're gonna get is our pulses from the engine cranking over. I have a spark plug removed. We should have a missing pulse that lines up with cylinder number two. So based off of that, we can find out where the pulses are getting into our radiator. Let's give it a crank and see what happens. Press our stop button. Zoom out. That's pretty close to what I want. I want zoomed in a little more though. I'm gonna hit the record button and do it again. Give ourselves a little more clarity. We're gonna jump down to one volt for our relative compression channel. Press that stop button. Zoom out. That's a little better. Okay, we know that we have a big spike in the radiator. We know that we have cylinder number two spark plug out. We know what our firing order is. So when are we gonna have the uprise in amperage or the downslope in voltage? That's when we're on compression stroke. That's when we're gonna get that compression pushing into the radiator. So if we have a missing spot on cylinder number two, right here, this would be cylinder number three, four, and five. Now it seems like we have pressure from cylinder number five. We could be getting a slightly de delayed reaction. Um, it could be the compression from this cylinder takes a little bit to work through the cooling system. Sometimes you do have a delay. So I'm gonna narrow it down to cylinder number four or cylinder number five that's causing our head gasket issue. Those would be the two cylinders that I would jump in and say, this is what it is. Um, I'd pull those two spark plugs out and do a visual inspection. You guys are gonna to wanna to see what the difference is between the pulse sensor and an absolute pressure sensor or pressure transducer. So I'm going to swap my lead over to my WPS 500. I'm gonna to go to range three. I'm not gonna use the zoom feature. 
because I want to see what the absolute pressure is. I want to see if we get an increase of pressure every time that cylinder comes up on top dead center. So we do need to hit record. Um, I don't know if my scaling's correct. We'll give it a bash and see what happens. Ooh, hoo, hoo. see, we don't see this with the pulse sensor, but we can see that nice staircase happening there. We almost exceeded my, uh, my voltage rating. So let's zoom in a little bit here. Uh, let's go out a little more. Okay, we get that staircase happening. Every time that cylinder comes up on compression, it blows a little bit of pressure into the radiator and it keeps that pressure in the radiator. Um, we see a little bit of, of a dip afterwards because that piston is going to go down. It's going to suck a little bit of air back out and cool it out of that cooling system. And then the next time that piston comes back up on top dead center, we get another spike into the radiator. So our dead cylinder, cylinder number two. So if we go cylinder two, it should be here. Three, four, five. I'm still on the fence. It could be cylinder number five that is causing that pulse. Um, it, in this capture, it looks like cylinder number five is more likely our culprit. There and there. Now I can get to cylinder number four pretty easy. So if I pull cylinder number four spark plug and crank it over, there's gonna be no compression in that hole. If I don't see a spike going into the radiator, then I've identified the cylinder. Now cylinder number four, I do not see any antifreeze on the plug. Uh, let's go ahead and crank it over and see if I still have a pressure pulse. If we do, then it's definitely cylinder number five. I was just on the fence because it was kind of in between the two cylinders, but I'm thinking it's cylinder number five. Oh. Looks like it must be cylinder number four because we do not have pressure pulses going into the radiator now. So that pretty much confirms it. We have an issue with cylinder number four. Um, kind of surprised that we don't see any signs of coolant on the spark plug. Cylinder number four is my culprit. Um, that's the one that I need to take a really close look at when we tear this thing apart. Look at the head gasket, look at the ceiling surface on the block and the head, make sure there's no cracks, no scratches, anything like that. Um, I know that some of these had issues, mostly it was with the older ones, but they had issue with pitting on the block that Toyota was actually replacing the blocks on them. Um, they had that big problem with the three liters. They didn't really have it as much with the three, four, but maybe we have something going on there. The customer may have overheated it, but we have it confirmed. Cylinder number four is our suspect cylinder. And there's that. So uh, for this week's test, week 15, we want a pressure transducer or a pulse sensor reading from the radiator neck. I'm giving you guys the option since not all of you have both options. Um, so we're, for most of these tests, we're gonna use a pulse sensor or a pressure transducer or the pulse sensor, either one. And if you have both, get a capture of both so we can see what the difference is between those two sensors. Um, some are suited for testing certain things better than others. Sometimes a test you wouldn't think that one would be good for, it works perfectly. So there is that. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Now, since I had a chance to tear down this vehicle this week, I wanted to share the inspection results. So we knew it was going to be a bad head gasket or a cracked head. And unfortunately, it ended up being a cracked head. Now, these head gaskets were done about a year ago, but obviously um, this crack wasn't there or I didn't notice it when the head gaskets were performed. Um, it lasted a year before it started acting up, but there is a crack. This is cylinder number four between the intake and exhaust valve. Now, when I was inspecting all the other cylinders, cylinder number six 
actually had a crack as well. And it looked worse than cylinder number four, but during our testing, when we pulled out the cylinder number four spark plug, that's when our pressure stopped entering the cooling system. So I unfortunately need to replace at least the one head. Um, probably best just to do both because we don't know how hot they actually got this thing um, to cause that kind of cracking. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.